Hi, Rody. My name is Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Kid. I'm Jaden. And we're at the Athlete of the Tour YouTube channel. And we thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us. Our family is your family. Your family is our family. We love you guys. And we appreciate all of you guys. And um, we are in the middle of a an incredible reading. Uh, one of the most incredible readings I think I've ever read in my life. And um, today is, is just going to get even more better. We're going to uh, be speaking on amazing stuff. Who are we and what do we believe, gentlemen? We uh, are the people that believe the laws of commands are done for. They were not done away with, but did they. Did you say the laws of commands are done? They should be done every single day. They should be done <laughs> as a human being, as a person of Yah. You should be doing the commandments of Yah. You should not be throwing them away because Hassan said you should throw them away because that's where he wants you. He wants you in hell because you did not keep the commandments. Because Yahushua said, if you do not keep the commandments, he will say, turn away from me. If you just turn away from me, you are not going into the shouting. You're not going through the rain. Yeah. Okay, and so here we are, and we're gonna. There's some amazing stuff today, and um, let's continue on. Case uh, 31 is where we're at. After these things had been done and said, it was the time of a festival of the Yahudim, and Yahushua returned to where there was a place of assembly. On the way, he passed through the market where sheep were sold, beside which was a salt pool having a covered entrance to shelter the sick and maimed. A man was lying nearby, and Yahushua said to him, How long have you been here? The man replied, I have been here a long time, having no one to put me into the water at the proper times. Yahushua took pity on the man and taking him by the hand, raised him up and said, raised him up saying, you are cured. Arise, take your bed and depart. Okay. We've heard the story before, right? Yep, this is a lame guy. Yep. Okay. Did you find your, where you're at? Mm -hmm. Okay. This happened on a Shabbat. <clears throat> and when some pious Yahudim saw the man, he carried a burden. They rebuked him. But he said, the healer who came and cured me said I should take up my bed. So where am I in the wrong? The pious Shahudim inquired regarding the healer, but the man said he did not know him, having never seen him before. Later, when the man who had been cured saw Yahushua outside the place of the assembly, he learned his name and told the Yahudim. Why are you throwing your own dude that just like changed your life on the bus? Well, I don't know if these guys, I don't know if this, this, um, this sick guy knew exactly what these guys were up to, right? I mean, the, these guys were religious leaders in their thing, and so as a religious leader, these guys were supposed to be um, looked up to. They're supposed to be the product, respected. Who, who healed you? Who did this for you? Right. And he's like, oh, the Yahushua did. Yeah, and I mean, that's the thing. He's not like throwing him under the bus. He's just, he's so happy, you know, and that's what you're going to do. You know, who healed you? You know, you're not going to, you know, keep it quiet. Okay. Before this, the pious one, pious ones who were separated out from the people had ignored Yahushua. But now, because he did such things on the Shabbat, they turned against him. For Yahushua said... If my father does not rest, why should I? They thought he claimed closer kinship with Elohim than ordinary men, but he meant to show that all men are brothers. That's interesting. Um, I've never heard that statement before. He never ever said anything like that before. If my father does not rest, why should I? What do you guys make of this, where Yahushua says something of this nature? Um, I think he's trying to say that there's kingdom work that he has to do, and that Yahushua is still doing his job, so he has to complete his as well. Yeah, and you know, that's the thing is, is, um, you know, if you want our creator to rest on the seventh day, um, where is he going to be? What kind of madness is going to happen on that day that he's gone? You know, and that, that's the same people that, that believe that um, Hasatan was able to kill our creator, right? They, they say, oh, yeah, they took God and they stuck him on the cross. And, you know, God's name really isn't God, but his name is Jesus. And they killed him. No, they, they didn't. They, they, they killed the son of the Most High and his name is Yahushua. You no, know, those are all pagan terms. God and Jesus; those are those are not the correct names. There was no J's in Hebrew, and so our Messiah's name never had any kind of J's. It was Yahushua. Very interesting, though. He says, um, "If my father does not rest, why should I?" Thirty-six. The next day, when Yahushua com com commenced speaking to the people, many sought to do him harm, and he said, "You have the teach teachings of the Torah and the prophets. Why do you seek to do me harm?" Then they shouted back at him, "Because you are possessed by demons." You tell us we are wrong, but we are content with our ways. Leave us to go our way and you go yours. You know, I've heard this exact same things out of the Christians' mouths for seven or eight years, right? They don't want to hear that you shouldn't be eating pork, right? Oh, you go your own way. We're content in our ways. My own mother, she, she does not want to hear that. I beg her not to eat pork. I beg her to live in the tour. I beg her to do all this stuff. And she's like, leave me alone. We're content in our own ways. We know. And, you know, we have a Torah command, which says not to do what we think is right in our own eyes. And it's very, very easy as we sit and we live 
our life thinking that we are responsible for everything when we didn't give ourselves our life. Our creator gave us our life and he gave us two legs and he gave us two eyes and two arms and a brain and, and a mouth and we're able to speak and talk and breathe and do everything. And we did nothing. All we did was zero, zilch. We learned how to walk and did we have the capability to learn how to walk ourselves? No. Our creator built every single thing and every little aspect of everything from babies to the, the time you kick it as, an ad, as you're, you're old. It's just the way it is. Okay. Um, 37. After this, Yahushua went away because of the hostility towards him. But when it came close to harvesting time, his brother sent a messenger saying, Come back now. The people are busy at work. Let your followers here see for themselves the things you do. For if your message is important, the bearer should not remain hidden. All right, this is interesting, right? So it looks like all the people in the town that were trying to kill him, they all had to go off to work or something, and everybody calls him back, right? Is that what you guys got I out of this? I think so. I think this is like a little after, like this is when they're harvesting after the feast they had. And uh, like, I think his brother, I think his actual brother is like, hey, come back. The people are working. Come see the work they do. This is an interesting thing about people who believe that marriage is a one man, one woman thing and nothing outside of it have to understand the Messiah had brothers outside of other marriages, right? Or outside of other women. There were, there were, he had brothers that did not come from Miriam, right? And so when we are talking about Joseph, we're talking that Joseph had another, another wife and Miriam was a secondary wife to him as well. And so those are things that people should understand, um, that were, you know, that's just what it is. 38. Uh, did we do, Okay. 38. On his way back, Yahushua and the disciples with him passed through Samaria. There was a place called Jacob's Well, five furlongs from Shechem. The sun being at its height, they decided to rest there. After refreshing themselves, the disciples went into the town to buy food, leaving Yahushua reclining not far from the well. Now, while Yahushua rested there, a Samaritan woman came to draw water. And Yahushua, having a, not having a vessel, asked her for a drink. This surprised the woman. For the Yehudim regarded anything handled by the Samaritans as being defiled. She said, how can you ask this of me? Now, we've heard the story a, a, a lot, right? right? We've heard all of the story, but we've never heard this single thing about this. We didn't understand. We, we knew when you study what it means um, in Judaism and various things and what they believe. And they believe that, you know, unclean hands or undefiled hands will, will corrupt all sorts of things. And so... Her question was, why would Messiah want to use a vessel that she touched? She touched, right. And um, that's, very, that's very interesting to know. 40. Yahushua replied, if you knew what Elohim gives through me, you would have requested a drink from the waters of life. The woman said, what is this water of life? Surely it cannot bestow greater benefit than this well, the gift of our forefather, which provided water for him, his household, and his flocks. Yahushua said, this water originating on earth can satisfy only body and the drinker will thirst again. But the water I can provide springing from an eternal source satisfies any who drink. So they need never thirst again for things not of this world and it grants everlasting life and glory. The woman said to Yahushua, let me have this water you talk about. So I am freed from the necessity of, for drawing water. Yahushua said, it would be best if you went and brought your husband for two may understand better than one. She answered, but I have no husband. Yahushua said, in this, you have at any rate spoken true. For though married five times, you now live with one who is not your husband. The Samaritan woman said to Yahushua, Master, I can see you are one of those special people who know all things. Now tell me, is it true what your people tell us, that we should worship in the temple at Jerusalem to reach the ear of Elohim? For he is only there and not in Mount Gerizim. Very interesting stuff, right? Yeah, so it seems the Jews told him, no, you can only worship here, you can't worship yeah, wherever you want. Right, and that's the thing of the Jews, right? Unless you're a Jew, unless you come to this temple, you're not going to, to, to find Elohim. Well, this is something different. Yahushua told her, be assured the time is coming when the place of worship is unimportant. For through your people worship without understanding. For though your people worship without understanding the nature of worship, while the Yahudim worship with this knowledge, neither know the true nature of worship. The time is coming when all who understand the nature of worship will do so in Ruach and in the light of truth. So basically, he said, basically, that it seemed like they were only able to worship in a certain area. But, you know, Daniel, he worshiped in, uh, in, in Babylon and uh, looking out his window 
And yeah. so it's like they, they took traditions out of Babylon or something. It's like you can only worship in the temple nowhere else. So you have to come here. You, you cannot worship Yahoo anywhere else. So Yahoo's know, like you, soon enough, everyone will be able to worship wherever they want. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And that's that's the thing is, is our Elohim is not sitting in a temple of the Jews. He's not sitting in a church of, of a 501c3. He's not there. He is all around us. He's from the, the sunrise in the morning to the breath of air that you breathe every single moment of the day to the the opening of your eyelids that you're able to grasp the beauty of everything. That is where he is at. And he is all around us on that. Okay. 48. For Yahuwah is the greatest of Ruach, and his worshipers must therefore bring something of the Ruach. This and labor in his service is the only acceptable kind of worship. The smoke of flesh and fowl are not acceptable offerings. Wow. Okay. So we, we heard all about this, right? Yeah, and, we, know that, we know that he doesn't want offerings. We know that that's yeah. not what he wants. Yeah, what does he want instead of offerings? He wants obedience. Absolutely, he wants obedience. And um, it says, uh, you know, it, it's uh, the labor of his service is only acceptable kind of work. Um, labor in his service. So basically teaching for Yahuwah. Yeah, whatever his service. What is the service of Yah? It is feeding sheep. The yeah, Torah. it's the Torah, right? If you find the broken, if you find the strangers, if you find those who are in need of help, if you, you know, that's what we are called to do is we are called to bring a light to those who are in darkness. 49, the woman heard without understanding, but one with Yahushua stored these things in his heart. The woman said, someday an enlightener will come and explain these things to us. Yahushua replied, my words may have come from the enlightener himself. Okay, who's the enlightener himself? Yeah. yeah. The woman said, I must go, for you frighten me. Just as she was preparing to go, the disciples returned and were surprised to find Yahushua had been talking to a Samaritan woman in this manner. But they said nothing. Leaving her pitcher, the woman hastened away to spread word around that there was a man out at Jacob's well who could read the past and might be the enlightener. For the Samaritans did not await the deliver as the Yahudim, as did the Yahudim. When the woman had gone, the disciples showed the things they had brought to Yahushua. But he was disinclined to eat, saying to them, Doing the will of Yahuwah sustains me, and the inflowing power of his Ruach quenches my thirst. Okay, so there's some power right there, right? If we're, um, when we're fasting, right? And, and when we're fasting, it seems like you just can't go on or something of the sort. Yahushua talks about being sustained by the power of the Ruach, and it, it, it basically takes care of him. And, and you know, that's, that is, um, some amazing stuff. 52. One of the disciples said, It is well to eat now, for the harvest is ripening over there, and the harvesters need strength. Yahushua said, The reapers cannot expect their pay until the crop is gathered in the storehouse. Let us wait to measure the fruits of our labor before celebrating. It is, is it not written, Where one man sows, another reaps? You will be reapers in fields sown by others. Many have toiled in the preparation of the ground and have sown good seed. You must, you must be no less diligent in reaping the harvest, gathering it carefully so not a grain is lost. The one who had remained with Yahushua said, Master, I am puzzled. This woman had many husbands. Tell us which one will be her husband in heaven. This is a very, very key piece of this lesson today, teaching. Yahushua said, In heaven there is neither marriage nor giving in marriage, for there the promises of marriage are fulfilled. To one she must incline more more than towards the others. And if she inclines likewise, there is a union of the Ruach. But unions of the Ruach may be either weak or strong. Okay, so um, what is what did he just answer and what did he just say? Um, so basically, it's like basically like when the Ruachs or your spirits are connected. Or your spirit, or yeah, yeah it, well, that's the thing. Is, 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 it is the, the marriage is a strengthening of two people's spirits, right? This the the... That basically, it, it's not really a, a piece of paper thing. It is a, it is a strengthening of the, the, the spirits. Your spirits will, will join together. And when your spirits join together, that is what the marriage is. 56. Another disciple said, What of he who is not her husband? Yahushua answered him, Marriage is not of the flesh, nor made by words of men. It is of the Ruach. And they who are joined in Ruach and flesh in the sight of Yahuwah, let no man seek to lightly put apart. A marriage holy of the flesh is fornication, though it be blessed by many priests. Okay, these are huge things that we have not heard fully in a lot of this stuff, right? It says right here, it is very, it is very clear. Um, 
marriage is not of the flesh, nor made by the words of men. What does this say to you guys right there? That marriage is by Yahuwah and through Yahuwah. Yeah, that all of these uh, man-made marriages that you're doing with the, the judges, all of the stuff, I, I don't know if it, it's, it fits in the sight of Yah, right? It's not, that's not what makes a marriage. What makes the marriage is that you have two, two spirits that are going to go together, two, a man and a woman, and they are, um, anything outside of that, they, Messiah calls fornication. And so marriage is something very, very strong. And um, let's continue on. Yeah, marriage is the, is the, marriage is the measure of value. A thing possessed by many is of little consequence. The worth of a coin lacking inscription is unestablished, and the possessor carries it without faith, doubting its ability to buy bread. A woman may be reserved for marriage or give herself freely for love. She knows her own worth best. But if she gives herself to several, then it is not love, but fornication. And um, this is, uh, before we go into to verse 59, I would like to um, speak as to your mother and myself, tomorrow we will have been married 22 years. And so we have known each other, I think, for 25 years or so, somewhere around there. And um, I will say in those 22 years, it has been crazy. It has been the greatest times of my life. It has been the hardest times of my life. And I will never, ever wish anything other than my bride that I have right before me. And um, this next verse, I will tell you without a, without a shadow of a doubt, this is truth. A union is blessed before a priest and sanctified in the eyes of people. But I tell you, unless the bond is forged on the anvil of adversity and wrought under the hammers of stress and struggle, it is a thing of little spiritual substance. Love is not like the thistle seed blown this way or that according to the prevailing winds, or desire and inclination. It is not the offspring of flesh, but the progeny of Ruach. It can be proven and established only under difficulties and tribulations, and it is because of the known frailties of men under trial and test that marriage has been ordained to enshrine it. Now after these things were said, many Samaritans came and heard the words of Yahushua and invited him to stay among them, and he remained three days. Yeah, this, these people then came out. People actually like, hey, please come cheese. They're like, get out. Yeah, and let's let's talk about this. Let's talk about this marriage thing because this is this is something that you know we live in a world today where you will get married. They they have like Las Vegas marriages. You will get married, and in thirty minutes you'll go and get a divorce. Literally, people go to Vegas and they get married that same night and get divorced that same night. It, it just you know all of a sudden they're like they're drink well they're drinking and you know they they like it or they just meet a woman and they you know they all of a sudden and it, it changes everything right and you will not find a love and a marriage like that this is a real marriage is built upon uh, trials and tests and it 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 is one of those things that it 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 attacks you over and over and over marriage is never ever something that is not something that has to be worked on. It has to be worked with and it has to be worked for and it has to, you have to see each other's sides. And I have no idea how your mother is still married to me after all these years because I'm the bad side of that stick. But as far as marriage goes, the greatest thing I ever did in my life that sustained me and settled me down was, was finding our creator, which I didn't even find until after I was married. And so um, marriage is a very, very good thing, but it has to be, in the eyes of Yah, and it doesn't matter if you want to get married in the eyes of the state. If you get married in the eyes of Yah, and you guys are both Torah keepers, and you're both dedicated truly to the Torah and to Yah, then your marriage will make it. But it's not going to be easy, and it will never ever be something that's very, very easy, right? You always have to dig for it. You're always going to have to keep your eyes on your prize. You're always going to have to never ever let it go. And the one thing is you don't want to let it go. And that's the beauty of marriage is the longer that you're together, the stronger you're supposed to get. And that is what you need because the world is, is a crazy place. And so our creator built a beautiful device, a beautiful system in a bit of beautiful way. And so um, just so everybody knows, I guess that is uh, the end of today's stuff. Anyone have anything out there? Um... I don't think so. I think read your Bibles. Um, you can get the, this book on the Torah. You can go to the Torah.net website. Yep. Are you guys learning anything from this? Yeah. yeah. What do you guys learn? 
I mean, what do you guys learn? Chapter six chapters into this stuff. We learn a lot more about Yahushua's words, uh, more stuff, more how more how he acts and how he's a seems to be kind of a different kind of person. He seems more human than we thought. Yeah, way more human than we thought. And this is amazing stuff because um, that is who our Messiah is. And so, all right, guys, thank you guys very much. Have a wonderful day. All right, shalom. Shalom. shalom.